Welcome back to Annie Recapped. Today we will cover part 2 of Sewing Spider So What? Hope you enjoy. Having beaten Araba the Earth Dragon, Komoko emerges from the Great Elro Labyrinth, but immediately finds herself attacked by archers. Using her overwhelming strength, she completely destroys the fort and runs away as fast as possible. Having escaped, she walks around enjoying her newfound freedom. So she can walk around without humans attacking her, she decides to make it her priority to evolve into a Rakshin, a spider with a human torso. While she is traveling, she senses that Mother Spider is angry and wants her to return to the labyrinth. The Mother Spider can usually force her children to listen to her, but Kumonoko has the heresy nullification skill, so she can't be controlled and refuses to return to the labyrinth. Fifteen years in the future, at the royal palace, the king and his sons meet up with Padamas, the chief of the elves and Oka, who is actually his daughter. They have gathered because the humans and the demons are at war. Aside from Julius, who has been killed in the war, Shun Suk has two more brothers, the serious blue-haired Celis and the kind purple-haired Leston. While Celis wants to send Shun Suk to front lines as soon as possible, Leston thinks he is too young to go to war, even if he is the hero. Since the current demon lord and her followers are exceptionally strong, the king and Potamas agree he should carefully think about what they will do about her. Somewhere else, Natsum kidnaps Canada and Sue. Fifteen years in the past, Komoko is attacked by monster spiders sent by her mother. Having prepared a trap, Komoko captures the spiders in her webbing and shoots black magic bullets at them. But the strongest among them survive. Running away from them, Komoko once again manages to prepare a huge web and trap her enemies. She teleports the strongest spider, a white arch terratect, all the way to the magma lake in the Great Elro Labyrinth and after a long struggle, finally manages to push him into the lava and eat him. Still hungry, she eats the three remaining spiders in the same way. Afterward, she realizes there must be some kind of connection between her and the mother spider. Calling her parallel minds together, Komoko makes a gateway to the mother spider's mind and sends the three of them to attack it. Having entered the mother's mind, the three Komokos start devouring it. Exploring the area, Komoko notices a group of bandits is attacking a coach. Realizing she can get some experience points, she quickly defeats them all using her sharp sighted and powerful magic. Seeing a couple inside the coach, she inspects their baby and notices it is actually a vampire. In addition, she is also a reincarnation called Sophia, whose past name was Shuko. Sometime later, Komoko comes across a gathering of elves who are planning to kidnap the baby. She decides to protect the baby and kills the elves quickly, but decides not to get involved any further. Fifteen years in the future, Su invites Shun Su to the throne room. When he arrives without saying a word, Su suddenly kills the king, punching a hole clean through his forehead. Immediately after, she screams, accusing Shun Suk of having killed him. Moments later, Celis and his knights arrive together with Natsum and apprehend Shun Suk. Since Celis wants to inherit the throne and Natsum wants to get his revenge on Shun Suk and Oka, they join forces. Celis heard the king wanted to make Shun Suk king soon, so he won't have to go to war. Since Celis was supposed to be next in line, he wanted to stop the king and Shun Suk. Natsum also brainwashed Su, which explains her actions. While Natsun gloats over his victory, Shun Su gets angry and punches him. Suddenly, a silver-haired girl called Sophia arrives and interrupts the fight. It turns out she is the person who helped Natsu get his strength back. When Natsu prepares to finish Shun Su off, Oka runs in and helps him escape. Hyrus and Anna, Shun Su's blonde-haired elf attendant, join them and the four of them run away. Soon, all hell breaks loose when Silas and Natsu's forces start fighting against Leston's forces. When Shun Suk and the others ambushed by more rebel soldiers, Leston himself appears with backup and saves them. Having finally escaped, Oka reveals that the followers of the word are cooperating with Natsun and have declared him the new hero. Suddenly, the rebel army surrounds them, together with the brainwashed Canada. Fighting Canada, Shun Suk manages to wake her mind up, but her body is still out of control. Because she doesn't want to hurt Shun Suk, Canada pierces herself with her own sword. Shocked, Shun Su quickly runs over to her and manages to heal her. Suddenly, Sophie appears and reveals she has killed Pugimas. Looking at her stats, Shun Su realizes she is a reincarnation, just like him. Since she has the ability to nullify magic, Sophia quickly defeats Oka and grabs her by the neck. At the last moment, Murray appears and breaks them up, showing off her evolved form, a huge white dragon. Shun Su and the others quickly climb on her back and she takes them away to safety. Fifteen years earlier, Komoko's three parallel minds continue gnawing at the mother spider's mind but start wondering why she isn't reacting. Suddenly, the mother makes a huge hole leading outside of the labyrinth and traps the three Komokos inside her mind, preventing them to contact the main Komoko. While she's walking around upset-mindedly, Komoko feels the earth shake and the mother spider arrives. 
Looking at her stats, Komoko sees she's five times stronger than Araba. Panicking, Komoko starts running as fast as she can, but the mother keeps chasing her and attacking her. Just before she gets hit by one of the mother's spells, Komoko manages to teleport herself to one of her old shelters at the Elro Labyrinth. However, she is immediately surrounded by five arch teratechs and a horde of small ones. The five monsters start tearing her apart mercilessly, but she manages to get away with one health point. Running towards the volcanic middle of the labyrinth, a creepy six-armed puppet appears and stands in her way. It starts attacking her using incredibly fast sword techniques while the arch teratechs are still advancing from behind. Getting away from the puppet, Komoko launches a massive barrage of black magic bullets at the spiders while she uses a skill called Jinx Evil Eye to keep absorbing her enemy's magic points. When this strategy proves ineffective, Komoko decides to look for the weakest one among the spiders and kill it, hoping to get enough experience to level up and get her health back. All of a sudden, one of her legs gets caught by one of the puppet's strings. The puppet drags one of the arch teratechs on top of Komoko, intending to squish her to death. Left with no other choice, Komoko sacrifices an eye to cast Annihilating Evil Eye and kill the spider on top of her. Having killed it, Komoko levels up and gets her strength back. Jumping on another one of the arch teratechs, she bites into it and teleports to the middle of the labyrinth just before the puppet can reach her. Having leveled up enough, Komoko evolves into a spider form called Xana Haroa. Fifteen years in the future, having hidden somewhere, Oda tells Shunsuke and the others that Natsume intends to attack the elf village soon. In order to reach the village and stop Natsume, Shunsuke and the others will have to pass through the world's most dangerous labyrinth, the Great Elro Labyrinth. Entrusting Shunsuke with stopping Natsume, Lesta decides to go back to the royal palace and continue defending it. Fifteen years earlier, Komoko wakes up. Having evolved, she obtains a skill called Immortality and gets excited because she won't be able to die anymore. A smartphone appears and Administrator D contacts Komoko to congratulate her on becoming the only Zana Haroa spider in the world. As a reward, she decides to explain why Komoko reincarnated in this world. She explains that the previous hero and demon lord were so powerful that they tried to escape this world. However, the system that governs this world doesn't work in the other world, so the spell went out of control and caused an explosion that killed an entire class of Japanese students. Administrator D reveals she is the person who proposed the system in the first place, and she had to correct the hero and demon lord's mistakes. She collected the souls of all the students and gave them skills so they can survive in this world. In addition, she gave them all a special skill that made them reincarnate into the body that best suited their soul's frequency. She praises Komoko for getting powerful much faster than the others since everyone else are just infants. She also admits she's actually one of the reincarnated people, but won't reveal who exactly. Her presence made the hero and the demon lord's magic affect the classroom in the first place and she even thinks they were sent to kill her back then. Hoping Komoko will continue to entertain her, Administrator D's voice disappears. Fifteen years later, Shunsuke and the others hide Marais somewhere and arrive at a village. Parents introduces the others to a mustached labyrinth guide called Basgath. Later, Oka and Kanina go visit Marais and later bring back a blonde girl with wings. That girl turns out to be Marais, who gained a skill called humanification that enabled her to change her appearance to that of a human. The next day, Basgath takes everyone to an underwater passage towards the Great Elro Labyrinth. There is the possibility a water dragon could appear, but they decide to take the passage in order to avoid their enemies, the Imperial Guards. While they're swimming, the huge water dragon really does appear, but Murray distracts it using her flame breath and enables the others to enter the labyrinth. Fifteen years in the past, Komoko is at a beach enjoying herself. Making a boat out of webbing, she decides to go fishing. A huge water dragon takes her bait, but she easily kills it. Remembering she has unfinished business in the labyrinth, she teleports there and continues fighting the puppet spider. Teleporting seawater into the labyrinth, she manages to drown it. Having defeated the puppet, she decides to continue fishing. Suddenly, her magic brain contacts her, warning her that a threat even bigger than the spider mother is approaching her. In the distance, Komoko sees an incredibly high-level creature called an Origin Terratect with the name Ariel. Looking at her stats, she sees it's actually the demon lord herself and starts panicking. With one hand movement, Ariel makes Komoko explode into body parts. Fifteen years in the future, Shunsuke and the others make their way through the labyrinth, fighting its monsters with ease. Following Basgath's advice, they all take a break. Shunsuke later wakes up from a nightmare about a silver-haired woman with blue wings on her head who keeps saying he is leveling up and then suddenly says she is in pain. Hearing he had a bad dream, Basgath gets worried because that is a sign that a powerful spider monster called the Nightmare of the Labyrinth might appear. 
People believe the Nightmare is dead, but Basgath doesn't think so. It is said that the Nightmare won't attack you if you don't attack it first and that it even sometimes heals the wounded. Waking everyone else up, Basgath continues guiding them through the labyrinth. After a while, a powerful purple earth dragon attacks them. Shunsuk and the others fight it, but it's strong against both physical and magic attacks. Mairei runs towards the dragon and punches it, knocking it down. It turns out that both her skin and her punches are as tough as a dragon's even in her human form. While she is distracting the enemy dragon, the others weaken it with magic. In the end, Shunsu finishes it off with a holy light beam. Having defeated the dragon, he levels up to level 29 and everyone obtains the title Dragon Slayer. Suddenly, Spider's Basgath recognizes as Nightmare's vestiges appear all around them, curiously observing them. Before they leave, they ominously say the world is going to end soon and that he can't do anything about it. Finding the hole in the ceiling that the Spider Mother made 15 years ago, Mary transforms into a dragon and takes the rest of the group to the surface. Fifteen years in the past, Komoko's head is floating in the sea, but she is still alive since she has the immortality skill and automatic health regeneration. While waiting for the rest of her body to regenerate, she is casually fending off sea monsters. She is afraid of Ariel returning and attacking her with Abyss magic, which destroys both body and soul. Meanwhile, Ariel enters the Spider Queen's mind and encounters Komoko's parallel mind. When Komoko's body brain attaches herself to Ariel's mind, Ariel realizes she has to completely kill Komoko to get rid of it. Sometime later, Komoko levels up and grows her body back completely. Coming across the same coach she saved earlier, she sees that there are still assassins after it, so she decides to follow it. The coach arrives at a mansion in the country of Sariella and Sophia's father, a black-haired man called John, tells his blue-haired attendant to investigate the spider monster that saved them. Fifteen years in the future, Shunsuk and the others part ways with Basgeth, giving him the valuable parts of the Earth Dragon they all killed together. Riding on Murray's back, Oka tells the others they will have to go to a country called Sereela next. People there worship a goddess with white wings and believe that if you erase your skills, you are actually offering them to her and you will be saved. Since the followers of the Word of God believe that raising their skill levels enables them to hear God's voice, the two religions hate each other. Fifteen years in the past, Komoko watches a group of assassins break into Sophia's house and kills them from afar with her evil eye skill. Since she already saved Sophia once, she doesn't want to see her die so soon. Letting one of the assassins go, she uses a skill called Clairvoyance to track him. When he returns to his allies, she sees they're all elves. It also turns out their leader is Potamus. He considers both Dustin, the leader of the followers of the Word, and Ariel, the demon lord, his enemies and wants to eliminate them. John, who turns out to be the Lord of Karen County, realizes that the spider monster known as the Nightmare of the Labyrinth has saved his family from bandits once again, but he still feels uneasy about it. It turns out that the goddess religion thinks spiders are sacred since the goddess herself was said to have had a spider servant called a Divine Beast. Finding out about the religion, Komoko remembers that Ariel had the title Ancient Divine Beast. While Komoko was relaxing in a tree, a woman approaches her and asks her to heal her son. Appraising them, Komoko realizes they're both poor and sick. Because she feels sorry for them, she heals them and they immediately feel better. Getting an apple as a reward, Komoko is satisfied. Soon, a huge line of people shows up looking for Komoko to help them, convinced she is the divine beast. Having nothing better to do, she starts helping them and becomes famous in town. Fifteen years in the future, Shunsuk and the others find the teleportation circle that serves as the entrance to the elf village. As soon as they arrive, the elven guard surrounds them, saying humans aren't allowed human in the village. Suddenly, Potamus appears and gives Shunsuk and the others permission to enter the village. Shunsuk and the others are surprised he is alive after all, but he won't reveal how. The next day, Oka everyone to the settlement where she took the other reincarnated students she discovered. The entire class gets together for the first time in a long while, but Oka doesn't join them for some reason. The students living in the village reveal that they have actually been kidnapped and are basically held prisoner by Oka. They don't trust her or the elves at all. Fifteen years in the future, a neighboring kingdom called Oats asks John to hand over the Divine Beast to them, claiming they have the right to her power. Since Komoko destroyed one of their forts when she emerged from the labyrinth, they want to punish her. Checking how the Mother Spider is doing, Komoko notices her stats have dropped dramatically thanks to her parallel minds attacking her. She immediately teleports herself to the labyrinth, but gets caught in a web, and the mother cuts her head off. While the mother is trying to eat her, Komoko's parallel mind returns to her, giving her a huge power boost. Having eaten a big part of the mother's mind, they absorbed an equally large amount of the mother's power. Rising all the way to level 24, Komoko fires an incredibly powerful barrage of black magic bullets, weakening the mother. 
Firing a beam out of her mouth, Komoko completely destroys her. After the battle, the parallel minds tell Komoko her body and brain is gone because attached to Ariel. At that moment, Komoko realizes the demon lord is rapidly approaching her and runs away back to Karen County, where her believers are. However, soon diplomats from the Kingdom of Oats appear and tell her they want to take her away. Hearing this, Komoko takes some of her offerings with her and simply walks away from them, leaving their mustache leer angry. Meanwhile, John is concerned Komoko might become the trigger for a war between Sariella and the Oats Kingdom. The diplomats from Oats are also staying at his mansion. Komoko is watching all this from a distance, wanting to leave but not wanting to abandon Sophia at the risk of being assassinated. At that moment, the same armored man Komoko met in the labyrinth before teleports to her, clarifying he won't harm her. He introduces himself as an administrator called Gutli Distides. Komoko decides to call him Guli because she can't remember his whole name. Guli wants Komoko to stop interacting with the humans and continue to live her life quietly and secret. Since she has become too powerful, her every move could create chaos in this world. However, Komoko refuses, telling Guli she wants to do everything she can to prevent the destruction of the world. Accepting her answer, Guli says he will do what he thinks is necessary and leaves. As soon as he leaves, Komoko is attacked by someone throwing knives at her, but she deflects them and kills the attackers with her evil eye. Noticing among them is one of the diplomats from Oats, she gets annoyed. Locating their mustached leader with clairvoyance, she kills him remotely with her evil eye and goes to sleep. At the Karen mansion, John finds the mustached diplomat dead, realizing the divine beast has killed him. A moment later, John gets the report that the Kingdom of Oats has declared war on Sariella. It turns out they managed to gather a huge army forming an alliance with the Rengzen Empire and the Holy Kingdom of Elias. Meanwhile, Komoko notices what's going on and realizes she might be at fault for causing the war. Because she feels responsible, she decides to help Sariella. Fifteen years in the future, Oka is lying in her bed alone. When she was reincarnated, she was born with a unique skill called Student Roster, which enables her to see a list of reincarnated students together with information about their past, present, and future. Seeing that most of her students aren't going to live longer than 20 years, she fell into despair. While she was still a baby, she talked to Potimus using her telepathy skill. She told him everything about her past life and her student roster skill, and he agreed to help her protect her students. The two of them kidnapped and bought off the students as slaves to take them to the safety of the elf village and change their fates. Because her student roster skill doesn't allow her to share any of the information with the students, she couldn't explain to them why she kidnapped them. Since she was unable to explain her actions, the students at the village all grew to hate her. The next day, together with Kanata, Murray, Hirons, and Anna, Shunsu visits the powerful barrier protecting the elf village. They are joined by two other reincarnated students, a blue-haired girl called Asaka and a blonde-haired boy called Kunihiko. Convinced that the barrier is impenetrable, Kanata thinks Natsume could have a spy inside the village who could help him get in, which is why she proposes that the teleportation circle into the village should be disabled. However, the elves are arrogant and won't listen to her, saying humans aren't a threat to them. On the way back to their rooms, Shunsuk and the others meet Oka. She reveals to Hirons and Anna that Shunsuk and the others are reincarnations, and that they're especially powerful because of that. She tells them about an old elf story that says that the gods will take away the lives and powers of people called from another world. The elves call those gods administrators and see them as enemies. They don't want any of the reincarnated students killed, because their powers will then return to the gods. Oka also reveals that the administrators have been using Natsume the entire time. She figured that out because Sophia was with Natsume and she is one of the reincarnations that has allied herself with the administrators. When she reveals Sophia is actually Shuko, everyone is surprised. Hearing all this, Hirons and Anna agree to protect the students. Aside from Sophia and Natsume, Shunsuk expects to be fighting Yuka because she is part of the followers of the word. There is also a possibility that two more students called Kusama and Kuya are actually their enemy because they don't know where they are. Sometime later, everyone prepares for battle, while the elves laugh at them thinking their barrier is invincible. Suddenly, Shunsuk and the others hear a commotion. It turns out a ninja called Kusama somehow entered the elf village through the teleportation circle. He is also a reincarnation, and he calmly admits he is their enemy. Immediately, everyone attacks him, but he uses his ninja skills to evade them. A moment before he teleports outside of the village again, he throws a sword in the air. The sword explodes and destroys the tree where the teleportation circle was. Outside, the same white-haired girl who killed Julius casts a spell and makes the entire barrier start glowing with a purple light. When Natsume proclaims the barrier has fallen, Yuka, Sophia, and their forces advance and start fighting against the elves. During the battle, Natsume finds Oka and attacks her with a magic sword, dispersing the wind magic she is casting to defend herself. 
Maxim reveals that he has been controlling people using a skill called Lust, and he also acquired a skill called Greed, which allows him to power up by killing his enemies. Left alone against Matsum and his allies, Oka does her best to defend herself, but her attacks don't work affect Natsum. However, she manages to shoot an arrow at his feet and cast a barrier spell through it, trapping him. Unable to breathe because of the barrier, Natsum starts choking, but Sophia arrives and blows Oka away, saving him. Lying on the floor, Oka wonders if she was a good teacher and waits for death, but at the last moment, Shunsuke arrives and blocks Natsum's sword. Fifteen years earlier, Komoko finds herself in the middle of the war between the Oats Alliance and Sariella. She fights against the Oats soldiers and turns out so strong she instantly and brutally defeats most of the army. In the Great Elro Labyrinth, Komoko's body brain has been eating at Ariel's mind and soul, making her personality start to resemble Komoko's. Guli teleports to her and immediately notices her soul has been slowly combining with Komoko's. Because of this, Ariel doesn't want to kill Komoko anymore, but still wants to punish her. Guli decides to help her and teleport her to where Komoko is, teleporting to Komoko. Ariel raises a barrier that prevents her from casting advanced magic. She attacks Komoko and Komoko desperately dodges, unable to do anything. Realizing that she can still use basic magic, Komoko starts blasting Ariel with simple light magic and damaging her, but Ariel's health regenerates so fast, Komoko's attacks are insignificant. Ariel also can't run out of magic points because she has the title Ruler of Gluttony, which enables her to eat literally anything and get her magic points back. Suddenly, a small blue-haired boy appears and challenges the two of them. Komoko appraises him and finds out that he is the current hero, and that his title gives him the power to slay the demon lord, which is making Ariel nervous. Suddenly, a huge fireball appears in the sky and distracts the hero. In that moment, Ariel uses her abyss magic on Komoko. Fifteen years in the future, Natsum clashes with Shunsuk, Checking his stats, Murray sees Natsum's stats aren't very high, but he has a lot of skills. It turns out the Demon Lord's army is following the Empire's army into the Elf Village, but Potamus is already aware of that. He doesn't care what happens to the reincarnated students and sends his whole army to fight. Meanwhile, Shunsuk and Natsum fight fiercely and Canada notices Shunsuk is much stronger than Natsum. On top of that, Shunsuk has the Dragon Power skill from defeating the Dragon in the Labyrinth, so all magic is weaker against him. Natsum is frustrated when neither his swordsmanship nor his magic works on Shunsuk and he soon gets tired, unable to continue fighting. Natsum says this world was supposed to belong to him, but Shunsuk tells him the world belongs to everyone. At that moment, Sophia appears, together with her attendant, the vampire Mera's office. Kunihiko and Asaka immediately recognize Mera's office as one of the commanders in the demon army, and it turns out Sophia is a commander too. Natsum realizes he has been used, but before he can attack Sophia in his rages, Mirazophis knocks him out. Shunsuk starts fighting Sophia, but her magic nullification is even stronger than Shunsuk's, and she has no trouble blocking his attacks. Seeing how strong Sophia is, Shunsuk's group attacks her together, but every one of their attacks is powerless against her. Shunsuk doesn't want to give up, but Sophia just laughs at him. Her master told her not to kill any of the reincarnated students, and she is actually just stalling them, while the rest of the demon army is wiping out the elves. Shunsu continues attacking, but Sophia blocks all his attacks once again. Suddenly, a horned man appears and introduces himself as Kyuya, one of Shunsu's former classmates and friends. It turns out he is also a commander in the demon army. He reveals that the elves are a threat to the world and that they most probably deceived Shunsu. When some elves appear and try to take Shunsu with them so he can kill the demon lord, Kyuya and Sophia attack them, saying they won't let Shunsu leave. The elves summon a group of fighting robots called Gloria Units, and they fire at Kyuya and Sophia. Fifteen years in the past, Komoko is completely destroyed by Ariel's Ibis magic. However, she hatches from an egg in the labyrinth, having previously used the mother spider's egg-laying skill and transplanted one of her parallel minds into one of the eggs she laid. In this way, she can resurrect even when her soul is destroyed. Suddenly, she hears Administrator D telling her she can finally evolve, and she evolves into a Rakshin turning into a human-looking girl with white hair. Fifteen years in the future, Kyuya and Safiya manage to easily deflect the Gloria unit's fire. Summoning a sea of blood, Safiya starts killing the elves and makes the Gloria unit sink. Shunsu tries stopping her, but he is interrupted by Kyuya, who kicks him away. The horde of elves attacks, but Kyuya kills them in droves using his magical swords. Shunsu locks swords with him but turns out to be weak. Anna suddenly runs between them to protect Shunsu, but gets seriously wounded by Kyuya. Doing his best to heal Anna, Shunsu levels up, also leveling up his taboo skill to level 10. With that, taboo activates and Shunsu learns the truth about this world. 
With so much information flowing into him, he writhes on the floor in pain. Having regained consciousness, Natsum attacks Sophia, but she easily stops him and almost kills him in her anger. However, someone appears and stops her. The white-haired girl who killed Julius in the past appears and all the reincarnations recognize her as Wakaba, their classmate who everyone thought was dead since Oka said so. Fifteen years in the past, Komoko evolves into a Rakshin, a spider with a human female's torso sticking out. At that moment, all the other eggs she laid also hatch and she gives them something to eat before leaving. Using her clairvoyant skill, she sees Karen County on fire and elves entering the mansion where Sophia is. In the mansion, Jack and his wife don't want to abandon Karen County. John sends his attendant, who turns out to be Marizophis, to take Sophia away and protect her. As soon as Marizophis leaves, he hears the elves invading the mansion and killing Sophia's parents. They catch up with him and shoot him full of arrows, but he doesn't quit. So if he doesn't die, Sophia bites Marizophis, turning him into a vampire. Regenerating, Marizophis easily kills the elves in a fit of rage. Suddenly, Potamus himself shows up and realizes Sophia could become a threat to him in the future and wants to kill her. However, Marizophis swears to protect her and won't let Potamus near her. At that moment, Komoko arrives and punches Potimes, blowing him away. Using her newest evil eye ability called Warping Evil Eye, she distorts space and tears the other elves apart. Potamus gets up, which surprises her because her punch is incredibly powerful. She is even more surprised when she can't read his stats at all. When she tries activating a teleportation spell, Potamus somehow disables her skills and magic. Potamus introduces himself, telling her he sees her as a threat and immediately attacks her. Komoko realizes his ability lowers her stats, but her already active skills and stat boosts still work. She struggles against Potamus, but manages to rip his skin, revealing he is a robot underneath. She remembers this kind of technology brought the world to the edge of doom and realizes she needs to defeat him for the good of the world. Turning his arm into a laser gun, Potamus starts shooting at Komoko and manages to cut her head off. However, Komoko still has her spider head, so she continues fighting. He realizes she can still use her skills inside of Potamus' body, so she breaks his gun arm from the inside. Suddenly, Ariel drops through the ceiling, acting flamboyantly like Komoko would. She asks Potamus what he is doing there, and when he won't tell her, she cuts his head off. Ariel approaches Komoko and instead of attacking her, proposes to make peace with her. She realizes she can't kill Komoko, and since their souls are merged, she doesn't even have the desire to kill her anymore. Komoko happily accepts her proposal. In a facility full of robotic bodies, Potamus awakens as one of them, swearing he will remember Komoko. While they're walking together, Ariel asks Komoko, Marizophis, and Sophia to join her in her fight against Potamus. Realizing she won't be able to save the world if she doesn't defeat Potamus, Komoko agrees to join Ariel. Marazophis also agrees to join Ariel and go to the demon realm with her since he and Sophia will be safer there. Ariel proclaims that they will become the heroes who will save this world and cheerfully leads them toward demon territory. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more similar content. Bye.